I want everybody to do me a gigantic favor. It's a huge favor. It's very important. It's, it's very important. Can everyone please say hi? To Time Pendulum Graph, baby, let's go! Welcome back, Time Pengraph! Time Pengraph has returned to the from the depths. From the depths, so the pendulum magicians are down. We bought him up, baby. It's not Time Pengraph gang. Time Pengraph gang, let's go. This is gonna be budget pendulums with magicians with Time Pengraph. So if you're excited to see some Time Pengraph OG magicians, let's go. If you're ready for that, I want you to smash the subscribe button. If you're hyped for some Time Pengraph, I want you to smash the like button. And lastly, if you're hyped for some Time Pengraph, I want you to go to tripgaming.com and check out the most beautiful playmats you'll ever, ever seen in your lives. Let's go. So if you're ready for the video, y'all know the drill. Smash the subscribe button and let's go, baby. Budget pendulum time. I mean, guys, just look at this. If you think I'm lying, seven negates, six negates, six negates. Like, this deck profile should change the way you look at budget pendulums forever, okay? Pendulum magicians must be played for every single budget pendulum deck moving forward without question. And I understand, no oh, trip, bro, you can't tell me what to do. Well, uh, yes, I can. Can Gordon Ramsay teach you how to cook? Yes, he could. So play this list if you guys have a budget under like 100, 150 bucks, and uh, you will find much success with it as long as you don't misplay and, you know, maybe sign up for the Patreon so you, like, you know, you don't suck and learn something. And you're also never gonna misplay if you play in a trip gaming play on tripgaming.com. And this is not a shameless plug. I'm just trying to help you guys get better at pendulums because any single person with my mat, with my play mats, with my beautiful furry custom play mats, this is not an ad, will could attest to that. That if you play on those, you put up 10 negates every day. Let's go, baby. So, with that being said, guys, I'll get straight into the deck profile with why we're playing what card. As you can tell, the biggest elephant in the room per se is the Magicians and the Pendulum Graph. Why would you do those, Triff? Well, if you could take anything from this entire video, just listen to what I'm about to tell you. If you leave after, I don't give you, I don't care. I'm just here to help you guys, all right? The number one reason why you're playing Pendulum Magicians, and I didn't realize this until now, is the same reason why Synchro decks like to play Eldritch cards in it. What happens if your Synchro play gets stopped? What happens if you get Nibiru and Baylor? What happens then? Oh wait, this is the format where one interruption on Needle Fiber and the deck loses. Is this not that format? Is this not the format where if you just don't, if you just get rid of Needle Fiber that they literally pass their turn? Oh wait, yes, it is that format. So welcome to our contingency plan called Time Pendulum Graph. So now if they have four hand traps on you, because that's how much it takes to stop pendulums, then their few cards left in hand are gonna get obliterated by your time pendulum graph, which under pen call is gonna be popping two cards. So like time pen graph is the number one best contingency for pendulums. And it offers a different dimension to pendulums that pendulums never had before. And you're only playing one copy of it because it's searchable by dualist alliance. So it's not like you're gonna brick on the contingency. The contingency of Eldritch Synchro, you're not gonna play like 20 Eldritch cards and they suck to be honest, but whatever. Here, you have a never-ending Time Pen Graph that pops every single turn. It doesn't leave the field like Inquisitor. I understand Eldritch also is continuous because it comes back every turn by, by a different effects, but so does Time Pen Graph because it's gonna stay on the field and never get touched. So this is the best contingency and the Magicians are offer so much for your deck. You cannot afford Magician Souls? Have you met Time Star Magician? Have you met Time Star Magician? Time Star Magician adds you Mighty Master. How do you think I made this board? How do you think I made this board? I used Mighty Master to summon itself to the field. I had no cards in Grave. I had no Jackal, I had no Love Rank 7, I had nothing. But because Time Star protects all my cards from Mighty Master's destruction, it doesn't just protect it, but so I add, to, I add Mighty Master, I special Mighty Master, protect everything with Time Star Magician's effect, and then Time Star Magician sends a spellcaster to the graveyard. Oh wait, kind of sounds like a card I know. Adds an extender, sends a card to grave. Hello, but it, on top, but instead of giving you a draw card, it gives you a protection of all your cards. So how's your opponent gonna clear this? Beats me. I mean, they can't pop any of your cards. Time Star protects them all from popping. Nice Inquisitor. Anyways, all these are made by, most of these boards are made by Time Star, bro. Like, at this board right here, like this is two interruptions from Pengraph, because Poison's not leaving the field. Pengraph's popping twice. One of them is Sen. 
Guys, my daughter is crying. One sec. You alright? You okay? Hey guys, if you haven't met Mia yet, say hi to Mia. As we were saying, the contingency plan of Time Pen Graph is remarkable. And the beauty of it is, if all your magicians, let's say for example, you have Abductor in your hand, and you have, uh, you, the only magician you had was access from Pen Call, so it's like harmonizing and something else you Pen Summon, and you have no other scale in the, in the high scale, well, the beauty of, but you have Pen Graph as well, how are you gonna resolve that Pen Graph? That's the beauty of this deck, because Time Star will end up searching Chronograph Sorcerer, and Chronograph Sorcerer will then Special Time Gazer, and because it's under Pen Call, Pe uh, Pen Graph will actually pop both, still. And Chronograph, uh, even though people don't know this, Chronograph could put uh, Time Gazer in the scale. So Pengraph will end up popping two cards for free. And it, it, it's so powerful, the fact that you're playing uh, 14 Magicians with Pen Call and stuff, but you're really only playing five that you're not normally playing. So it's like, it just, it's remarkable. I love this deck. You're playing two Jackal uh, because Nibiru is still very important. Otherwise, I'd like to play one. Two Mighty Masses is all you really need. You already have a bunch of sevens anyways. Uh, Into the Void could be cuttable for a third pen call if you really want to because with the addition of Celestial Magician and Time Star Magician you actually end up with like four cards in hand anyways but Into the Void is still very powerful just to ensure that your plays actually resolve uh, As for side deck now, side decking for uh, the specific meta with the new FTK involved now and making a budget is a little difficult so I would love to play Phantasmades but those aren't budget so instead we're gonna uh, stick with this lineup as it is right now uh, the Nibiru, I understand, is not budget at the moment, but the Nibiru has been along for so long and is one of those staples that basically everyone should have by now. So that's why I just put Nibiru in here. Hey, let's say you're starting out and just don't have any Nibiru and don't want to put spend money on it. That's fine too. It's not like Nibiru is actual like a be-all end-all of the deck. If you guys like the main deck right now, you guys should be able to easily afford this entire deck. Uh, if there's any specific cards you're missing, let's say Desires or Allure, I would recommend trying and get them. They are extremely powerful for the deck. Without spell counters, a servant and abductor just do not resolve. So I would highly re recommend trying to get the desires and allures. They're way more important than Nibiru's. But for the side deck, as you we were saying, hand traps right now are very important. Uh, one hand trap could stop the entire Elledge deck. Two hand traps stops the entire Rock deck. Two hand traps stops uh, Rock FTK. One specific hand trap could stop basically all of them. Uh, if you can afford Nibiru, get them. But if not, I would recommend a third Veiler. Ash is under the same category. is a little bit expensive. But that's fine. Ghost Ogre and DD Crow are very uh, cheap right now. You can also get DD Crow or, or Ghost Ogre to replace any of these. If you can afford Needle Fiber in your deck, let's say you have Needle Fiber but don't want to sp uh, spend money on Triple Souls and like Appaloosa and stuff like that. Needle Fiber does offer a lot for this deck. In the future, I will be showcasing that. On my Patreon later tonight, I will showcase the exact combo tutorials behind how I did these. There is a science behind it, how you ensure to always leave your high scale open because the high scale you search with time star to trigger a mighty master so the high scale you would love to either be another mighty master or another chronograph and then if, if you already have access to, to mighty master or chronograph then time star would end up searching a high scale like black banger celestial magician and that's how Pe pen graph will get its effect as well as celestial protecting your vortex and protecting your time star so there's lots of cool stuff involved here, which I will discuss in the Patreon as well. So make sure guys to go sign up down below on the Patreon. I can't stress this enough. For any new players out there want to learn more, it's very, very good. This is the extra deck. Uh, it is a budget extra deck, obviously. You guys are also going to notice Artifact Dagda. Most of these combos, by the way, I did not say this because I was going to save this for a future video. But for those that are watching right now, I'm going to reward you guys for watching this late uh, into the video. And uh, these two, the last two combos, actually end on an artifact uh, sight set so that dweller post side deck is actually a tornado dragon i did forget one thing completely boys sorry about that this should be a tornado dragon because the game plan post side deck is that you side in a scythe going first and you try and set up pen graph with with sight that way they can't play any they dark ruler you don't give a shit at all because you just pen graph and then sight i would also typically side in one veiler even if we're going first for into the void uh, if possible, because if you know that you don't care about Dark Ruler, your goal is to set up Scythe with like Pengraph or Veiler, and Abductor could search the Veiler. So you have eight one card interruptions via Abductor, Duels Alliance, Pengraph, and Veiler, and, and you don't care if you get Dark Ruler because you're gonna set up Scythe anyways with one of those as backup with the Scythe as well. And uh, that's why Veiler is important because it could be searched with Abductor. You cannot search, uh, you cannot search Souls in a budget version, obviously. Uh, so Deck Dan, Tornado Dragon are important for that. You got Crowley, uh, Breaker, Cross Sheep still. Uh, you can put two Nightmares because there's no Unicorn and no access codes. So you have as many ways to pop cards as possible. 
Coral Sword, most people should have by now. Time Star Dweller and the Absolute Vertex Package. That's the deck, guys. I'm a huge fan of this list. I think it's absolutely amazing. Not just for a budget. Uh, like if this deck was five hundred dollars, it would. You guys would probably. If this was new, if this deck right here was new, if this deck just got released yesterday, and does what this deck does at fifty dollars worth budget, but it was one thousand dollars instead, the whole world will play it and recognize this is better than Elitch and better than Rocket. That's how powerful I believe Pendulum is, but no one gives it credit because it's been along for so long and so much stuff has been banned. But that's how powerful Pendulum is, that despite all these bans, we're still the best deck. So you guys got this far, don't forget to smash the subscribe button. Hit the like button as well as hit 500 likes. And I wasn't joking about the Patreon stuff, it really helps you guys get a lot better at Pendulums. Anyone that can, anyone can attest to that that's been watching on my Patreon. I post lots of videos on it to help you guys get better. And lastly, if you guys haven't already, I'm not even joking, bro. My playmats are the best in the game, hands down. So you guys want to check out the most beautiful pendulum playmats. They're custom pendulum playmats as well. Check out TripGaming.com where we got the most custom, beautiful pendulum playmats you've ever seen. Whether they're custom pendulum or not, they're just absolutely sexy as hell by themselves. So that's the video, guys. Hope you like it. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.